asked you if you had anything you wanted to know, any advice on, etc, etc, because um, someone requested it. I think it was Alan, maybe, said that maybe I was good at giving advice, and one of my absolute favorite things to do in life is give people unsolicited advice. I'm also really, really good. No, uh, I shouldn't say really, really good. I'm well, like, well versed at rationalizing things when I'm not emotionally involved, if that makes sense. Like, if I'm looking at someone else's problem, I see the way out. I understand what to do. It's super easy. Can't do that for myself, unfortunately, but for other people, I'm pretty good at it. So, I have quite a few um, topics, so um, I'm gonna kinda go through them, but I might not get to all of them. It depends, you know what I mean? So, the first one is advice on how to live with annoying judgmental family members. So, I guess this is pretty situational, I think, um, because obviously if you're an adult and you're able to, like you're 18 and you can um, sustain yourself by yourself, obviously move out and only see them on holidays if need be. Um, but I think that my advice for it, um, this is a pretty broad topic, but I think my advice is to probably just to lay low and kind of be the bigger person, um, you know, and make a plan, like make a plan of how you're going to get away from this situation because if they're being annoying and judgmental, you know, it's not a good environment for you to be in. So I think it's important for you to like make a plan how to leave and make the steps towards that. But again, it all depends. Like, are you like 15 or are you 21 and you can leave if you want to? Um, you could always like move in with someone else too. I think my advice honestly is to get away because we don't need to live in environments that don't make us happy. It's totally unnecessary. Um, and, you know, I think in life we're always going to hurt someone eventually for whatever reason. Your home life should be enjoyable. So, also, people that are judgmental to your face just constantly without it being, like, constructive, they can get right wrecked. And maybe you should speak up. I don't know. It's, it's, this is tricky because I know that, like, family situations can be hard, especially when you don't know how to get out of them. But you could also just be like, hey, this is none of your business. This is my life. I'm going to live how I want. Like, it's really none of your business. You could talk to them and just be like, you know, you're making this really difficult for me. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, family, family can be a little tricky for me. Um, I don't live with any of my family that I think are annoying or judgmental, but <laughs> unfortunately there are a few members in my family that I don't really get along with, but I only see them occasionally for short periods of time, so I just kind of grin and bear it and like let them spew what they want to spew and like I don't take it too personally. Yeah, so maybe my best advice is to kind of just ignore it and figure out how you can maybe get into like a better living situation because if you don't have a happy home life, the rest of your life isn't going to feel that great. So that's my advice and I really hope that this like works out for you. Um, also, if you kind of like are waiting to move out, you know, um, just maybe spend time outside, spend time where they're not, like just kind of make a point of not being around as much as you can, find somewhere that you f feel comfortable, um, that kind of thing. I hope that's helpful. We started off with a bit of a tricky one, but I'm just reading them in order. <laughs> okay. Up next, advice on how to cope with changes like breakups and losing people. Okay, we're going to do losing people first because I'm better at that. <laughs> so, um, grieving is really hard. Like, I feel like everyone grieves differently, and I guess, fortunately enough, I'm the kind of person that, um, when someone dies, I actually handle it relatively well, um, and I actually 
actually like account this to my mother um, because I lost a, like my grandparents, two of my grandparents died when I was young, like four or five, like they died when I was really young. And then I spent a lot of my childhood and I never really lost anyone that I knew very well. And the first person that I lost that I like was genuinely upset about and I knew them and they were involved in my everyday life, I was a teenager. And I remember my mom telling me that grieving isn't linear, it's, it, it's got waves, you know? And she was like, um, you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be sad for a week, like you don't have to just feel sad, you know? You're allowed to laugh and you're allowed to still like enjoy life, you're allowed to still make a joke, you're still allowed to kind of continue to feel and you're also allowed to be sad, but don't feel bad about feeling happy, if that makes sense. Um, so that really helped me to realize, like, oh, like, just because I'm grieving the loss of someone doesn't mean that my life is stopping and that, like, I'm a bad person for making a joke and being like, wow, this is a really good piece of cake because someone that I knew was gone. So that, from that moment, I looked at grieving a bit differently. Um, I think it's important when you're grieving to cry and to talk about the person. Sorry, my light was about to fall off the table. <laughs> um, I think it's important to grieve and cry and talk it out and kind of just celebrate the fact that they were alive because every single one of us, our biological clock is ticking. We are all eventually going to die and I think that it's more important to focus on person when they were alive than the fact that they're no longer alive. Um, also, with grieving, um, I, I read a quote a couple of months back when I lost my grandpa. It's still really hard for me to actually talk about, um, but this is kind of the point, um, that grieving isn't really lost if you think about it in the fact that it's just a different way of loving them. It's an extension of like how much you loved them, you know, that kind of thing. So you loved someone so much, like that's so beautiful that you loved someone so much and now they're gone and it makes you sad and you miss them and you wish that they could come back kind of thing. So I think that sometimes we look at death as being a really sad, really unfortunate situation when I don't think that that's always true. There are situations where obviously it's really horrible, like when someone dies really young or like in an accident and it's not just kind of like naturally sort of thing, but yeah, I think it's important to look at the fact that you're just loving them in a different way. And like personally, when you like put yourself and be like, okay, if I die, I don't want everyone in my life to not keep living, so that's sort of how I deal with loss, and I also just talk about it, and I cry. So like I said, I lost my grandpa in March, and I never really admitted who it was, I just said that I had lost someone really close to me, because I wasn't ready to talk about it, because it still makes me teary, honestly. Um, <laughs> that it was so hard was because he was an incredibly important person in my life. Like, I would, don't tell my dad or my stepdad this or my brother <laughs> or my stepbrothers, um, but my grandpa was like the male figure that I looked up to the most. Um, like, he meant just so, so, so much to me. So, I just think about doing things that are like he would be proud of and I like to talk about him and that kind of thing my grandma's taking it really hard and I've been spending time with her because she's lonely. I feel bad for her because this is her first heartbreak and she's 78 years old. Um, and I just let her cry, like she'll cry and I'm just like, sure, you can cry, we can talk about it, like it's not a big deal. I think also, um, to deal with grief, you should just have someone that you know that you can talk to about this person. So that's kind of how I deal with people, um, and, you know, it just, it gets easier with time, you understand that they're not there, and they're not going to be there, and it's not because they didn't want to be, it was just because there were other plans in the making, so, that's how I deal with losing people, um, it just gets 
gets easier eventually, unfortunately. As for breakups, <laughs> I don't think I'm the greatest at breakups. I I haven't had a breakup in a while, but um, sometimes I get really petty right afterwards. I, maybe we all do. I get a little, I get a little mean. But um, after everything's been said and done, my favorite thing to do is just spend time. is fake it until you make it. Fake it, fake it, fake it, and eventually 
an animal and I'm, you're scared and everyone's like they're more afraid of you than you are of it it's how I feel with people in public like do whatever you want like they're not really paying attention to you they don't care maybe they're gonna care but they're gonna forget in a couple days like just that kind of thing you know it's not that big of a deal everybody is literally in the same boat as you and it's just like just do it and just say it and just be confident and just feel like you know you didn't believe that you should be in this room and you people are gonna want to hear what you say um and i think it's like for confidence you have to be comfortable you know wear what you want look how you want talk how you want be around the people that you want to be around and it kind of just comes um i was i feel like i don't even understand like a lot of people ask me like how like confidence like how do i become more confident and i guess i never realized that i maybe exude confidence um but i think it just comes from trying to love myself and accept myself for who i am and i just it's definitely a long journey that i'm not even near the end i don't think i'm near the end i i really don't there's a lot of things like i don't think that i'm overly like attractive for people to like want to come up and talk to me in a bar like i don't think that because that just never happens to me really you know like that kind of thing and i feel like that's something i'm working towards <laughs> it's just like kind of exuding more confidence for people to just be interested in talking to me i don't know that seems silly but yeah just kind of think about how you want to act and just act that way just start doing it it's scary at first but then you kind of realize that it doesn't matter and no one really cares i know that sounds silly because you care but other people don't they're not thinking about you they're thinking about themselves yeah and just seriously with confidence fake it until you make it girl fake it until you make it that's i just started pretending one day that i was happy and healthy and i am mentally ill and sometimes very sad so you know that's um that's my advice on confidence and being outgoing but sometimes um like outgoing i feel like can be a little tricky i don't think that i'm overly outgoing because i'm the person in a large group that i'm not really gonna say a lot and you you have to talk to me too but that's like something that i've just decided to be comfortable with like i'm comfortable not talking too much you know so it's kind of like what you want and if you want to be more outgoing you kind of just have to do it you have to make that effort and you'll hopefully realize that it's not as hard as you thought it was and it was kind of just like a mental block so okay up next what's the best way to make new friends with people and how to approach them without making it awkward a lovely question i don't have the best answer for this because when it comes to making friends i play a long game i play a really long game um so for example when i started working at my last job um i just i was talked to the people when i was there and wouldn't really make too many moves i would just be like oh yeah hi like we would chat you know with your i would chat with my co-workers um and then slowly things would just happen like it would be like oh i heard about this and like do you want to go through this together or you know just casually bring up like maybe an activity or thinking about and see if like they're interested and then if they're like oh yeah that, that, that sounds cool and then you could like ask them to go do it that kind of thing or like if you're part of a group or you work together or something like that you could just be like oh do you want to carpool somewhere you know just like your moment and take your best move um to make new friends um for me i just i make jokes when i'm nervous so um i just kind of start to like make little jokes to like draw the people in um but you know you kind of have to pick your own thing like are you good at like doing little favors for people are you good at remembering things you know that kind of thing i'm not overly the best at making new friends uh, because i am a strong believer in quality over quantity and i'm also really introverted so i like to stay home so yeah i just i slowly wear them down uh, or um honestly sometimes i just make things awkward and then that's what they like about me like one time i just told this girl that i worked with i wanted to be her friend um I was like, I would like to be friends, and uh, now we're friends. 
I don't want to speak on something that I'm not ready to speak on, I guess is kind of what I'm getting at, but for me right now, I'm trying to just create healthier habits and like create my mind to be a safe place. Um, I don't think that every thought you have, you have to accept. It's actually a quote from Aristotle, is that, um, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it's kind of like, just because you thought it doesn't mean that you need to accept that it's true. Like, you had the thought, that's okay, but you need to sit and think more on that. Like, is this really how I feel? Is this really who I am? So, I'm personally trying to create a healthier mindset just towards things. Um, I'm trying to figure out the root of a lot of my traumas, like why this happened, and I'm trying not to blame myself for those things because it's not even necessarily my fault. It's not your fault that these things happen to you. Things just happen. Things play out. They happen to you for a reason. Um, so I'm really trying to rationalize those and get to the root of that. I'm creating healthier habits. So some things I've started doing just to like make me myself feel better and give myself a bit more of like energy to live. I've uh, started waking up every morning and I make my bed. It seems so juvenile and like how is that gonna help but then it kind of just makes my room look a little cleaner and I go in there and I feel a little better because it's not messy. I've been trying to get my laundry done weekly. I've been cleaning my house every week. I've been journaling every day. I've been trying to get into nature more. Um, I've been reading before bed instead of um, going on TikTok or Instagram and then I'll watch my ASMR video and go to sleep. I wake up every day at the same time early in the morning. I've been trying to eat healthier. I've been spending time in my garden, you know. I think that it's important to nurture yourself um, and just like get to a place where you're okay with things. Also, um, something that helps me a lot is that um, everything becomes a lot easier in life when you realize that everyone around you is just projecting. That it's not overly about you, it's more about them and they're pushing it out, you know what I mean? And not everything needs a response. Um, something I try to do is not respond to things emotionally. I like to sit with them and like let the emotions pass and like let myself feel those things but then really think on it and that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm just trying to like I guess the major theme in a lot of the advice I've been spewing out that might not even be good advice, like maybe don't take my advice, I don't know, is that you need to control your mind a little more, you know? It's your mind. You can decide how you want to think, and it can take some time to change that, but it's what I've been working on, so yeah. That's what I've got. Okay. So by yourself, how to love yourself, how to cut off toxic people, how to prioritize yourself, advice on adult life. I cannot give you advice on adult life. Okay. Relationships with family and friends, breakups and losing people, how to not be afraid of trying out new things, how to find what you're passionate about, and tips on how to deal with mental issues. Okay, so I feel like I've touched on a lot of those things. Um, how to love yourself. That's really good. It. That's a really good thing. Um, that's something I'm currently in the process of doing. I think that I come off really sure about myself and all that kind of stuff. Like I have a really strong shell. My exterior is very strong and confident, and I, and I would like you to acknowledge that that is 100% a defense mechanism because. Um, I have a lot of feelings, like, I feel everything really hard, um, I don't want to say that I'm an empath, because everyone says they're an empath, I don't think I'm an empath, empath, I think that, like, I just feel a lot, <laughs> I feel, like, really deeply, and, um, I don't show it, I don't show it, because I used to think that if I show it, that I cared about things, that it made me vulnerable, and people were gonna hurt me, um, I learned from a really young age that people hurt other people, um, 
and I didn't like that. I did not like that, and I didn't want anyone to hurt me, and I didn't want anyone to think that I had feelings, so because of that along the way, I don't think I learned how to, like, really love myself and accept myself, and something that I've been really working on the last few years um, is just kind of showing that I do feel things, and I do really care about people, and I'm trying to, like, love myself and accept that that's who I am, and I'm trying to just be myself more, so I actually check up with myself a lot, and I try to decide, like, is this me, that kind of thing, like, just really check on yourself, like, really do that, like, take the time and be like, how am I feeling, why am I feeling this way, how are things going for me, that kind of thing, um, how to cut off toxic people, I am unfortunately, um, a little petty about this sort of stuff. I think that the biggest thing of cutting off toxic people is caring about yourself. Um, creating boundaries is really important, so I used to not be very good at creating boundaries with others because I just wanted people to love me and accept me, and because I couldn't do that to myself, like, I just wanted everyone to like me and say nice things to me, and then I would be happy, and I would, like, I wouldn't want to not love myself, you know? So, something I started doing about five years ago, which is crazy for me to say that it's been that long, was I started creating boundaries because people would ask me to do something and I would just be like, sure, yeah, I'll do it. Like, I'll do anything for you. And I started creating boundaries with people and being like, I didn't like that. I didn't like the way that you treated me. And it was really hard at first because I was like such a people pleaser. But some of the people that I was creating boundaries with, they didn't like it, um, and it kind of went a little, a little south with a few people, um, but I just decided, you know, I was creating these boundaries with you, and you didn't like that I created them, which meant I should have created them, like, this is a good thing, but if you can't handle this, then, like, catch you later, um, I'm also notorious for, um, just, like, ghosting my friends or ghosting people like this, like, I'll just be like, no, like, you don't want me, I don't want you in my life. I don't necessarily think that this is, like, a good thing, but, yeah, I think it's just important to, like, put yourself first and make people realize that they can't treat people poorly if they're being a toxic person. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. Um, everyone's kind of unique in this situation because some people are really bad at it, especially if it's like your family, people that are really close to you. It can be really hard, but you kind of just have to do it for yourself. And that leads to the next thing of how to prioritize yourself. Just, they all kind of link together. You gotta love yourself by putting yourself first because you can't help anyone if you need help, if you're not good. I was watching a tarot reading last night and it was, they gave this example that like when the airplane, they're giving you the little spiel on the airplane and they tell you to put your mask on first, that's kind of the same thing because if you can't breathe, you can't help anyone else to breathe on the airplane if you get into a situation. So that's something to think about, you know, you have to care about yourself. <laughs> advice on adult life. My advice is really simple. No one's beating you. No one's doing better than you. No one else knows what's going on. It doesn't matter at what age you figure anything out. It doesn't matter. Your timing, your life is unique and it's yours and it has nothing to do with anyone else. This is something that I really struggled with up until recently. I wasn't married. I don't have children. I don't really have a career. I have a university degree, you know, like I was doing everything by the book and then I stopped doing it by the book and now my friends and peers or just people that I know, you know, that did everything by the book, they're married, they have children, they have a job, they have a mortgage, like they're 25, 26 and they have all of this and I think about the fact that I wanted that, like why don't I have 
Yeah. <laughs>